I define feminist leadership as a process of transforming ourselves, our communities, and the larger world to embrace a feminist vision of social justice. It's the process of working to make the feminist vision of a non-violent, non-discriminatory world a reality, a world where there is equality and respect for the rights of all people, regardless of their gender identity, race, ability, class, caste, ethnicity, sexual orientation, religion, location, a world where human societies live in a non-exploitative, respectful relationship with the Mother Earth. So feminist leadership is about mobilizing others around this vision of change to embrace this vision and work together towards it. So feminist leaders cannot be individualistic. It has to be collaborative, sharing power and building collective leadership for this amazing change to happen. But here is the most critical challenge. You cannot transform the world without transforming yourself. So feminist leadership cannot be practiced until we recognize that we are part of the problem because we carry within us so many learned behaviors and so much oppressive, exclusionary practices of power. Feminist leadership, therefore, has to begin with the self, with interrogating ourselves and transforming ourselves. Why is feminism important to leadership? Feminism is important to leadership because you can't actually define feminist leadership without defining feminism itself. What does feminism mean to you? I define feminism as an ideology, a way of analyzing society, and a vision of what a just society looks like. As an ideology, feminism believes in equality for all people, not just between women and men. It's a non-binary vision. Feminism is a unique way of analyzing society through the lens of power. Who gets what, who does what, who decides what, and who sets the agenda. Most importantly, feminism is unique because it opens the door and looks inside at how power operates in the most intimate private spaces. It is only feminists who recognize, for instance, that even our bodies and our minds are sites of power and control. And this is why feminism is important to leadership, because it seeks equality and justice in spaces no one else had entered before. Because there are many wonderful examples of feminist leadership and practice, far too many to share in a short video. Uh, but let me share some that are slightly different. Uh, examples of how Older feminists like myself uh, have tried to practice feminist leadership when we are in a different stage of our lives and a different stage uh, of the uh, feminist movement building process. 20 years ago, I made a very conscious decision to give up positions of formal leadership and authority to be the executive director of this or the CEO of that. And not because I had to, but because I chose to. I decided it was time to explore 
a different way of practicing feminist leadership by leading from the back. This decision was motivated by the fact that I had seen far too many older feminists not letting go of positional power, clinging to those positions of authority, worried that if they let go, they would be marginalized or become non-entities, or that there would be no role for them anymore. I also saw how in many, many women's organizations all over the world, young feminists struggled to find space and voice and were denied uh, leadership opportunities because the older ones won't let go. So I was determined not to be one of these who claim to be feminists but are deeply patriarchal in their leadership practice. So I decided to demonstrate how older feminists like myself can serve the cause and still be valued by putting ourselves under the formal leadership of much younger feminists. And this is what I have done ever since. But I work to build the leadership of young feminist activists through my training and my writing so that they can emerge as feminist, as real feminist leaders. The irony is that this choice I made was extremely liberating. I didn't have to manage an organization or raise funds or spend a lot of time on administrative tasks. I earned a reasonable amount of money. The last 20 years have in fact allowed me to write and produce some really useful resources for feminist activists around the world, which I know I couldn't have done if I was busy being the boss. And my leadership in the process has grown enormously in an entirely different way. I have tried to create a model uh, of the other leadership roles that older feminists can play without being in charge. I practice what may be called thought leadership and leadership in the process of building new generations of leadership for the feminist movement, which is such an important task. But what are the big challenges to mainstreaming feminist leadership in our sector? I feel that there are two big challenges in this process. One is the deep-seated fear and insecurity that we all carry about giving up power, or at least formal power, and of sharing power. The fear that we will be negated somehow in this process and become disempowered or powerless. The other is what I call, uh, or what is called uh, by many organizational uh, development theorists, especially feminist organizational development theorists, the deep structures of our organizations. What are deep structures? These are the hidden sites where the larger power dynamics of the societies we live in gender biases, exclusionary beliefs and behaviors, uh, stigma, privilege, get reproduced inside the organization in these hidden ways, in these sort of submerged ways, even when the official policies of the organization claim to promote gender equality, non-discrimination, equal opportunity, and so on and so forth. This is why, for instance, we see so many cases of sexual harassment and the tolerance of sexual harassment by those in leadership in development organizations which have very high sounding missions and values and so on. So are there no positive results of 
all our efforts to promote feminist leadership? I think there are. I think the development sector now has realized that it's not enough to focus on gender equality and social justice in their external work and pretend that these are not equally important goals to address inside their own organizations, inside their organizational cultures. That is one very good result of the various scandals that have exploded and destroyed the image of several international NGOs in the recent past. In the process, there is a growing recognition that I see around the world that feminist leadership is not only something women's organizations need to do, but something everyone needs to think about and implement. Because feminist leadership is not about women. It's not about female bodies in leadership. It's a whole different way of approaching and practicing leadership as I've laid out earlier. This is a leadership where the power and the practice of leadership have to be balanced and shaped by our purpose and our principles. And this has nothing to do with the gender identity of the person practicing leadership. It's about ensuring that we practice our power in a way that actually reflects and models our politics and our values in our everyday behavior in all the spaces that we occupy. So the main lessons I've learned are many, but the most important one perhaps is that feminist leadership is an experiment. It's a journey for which we don't have any roadmap or recipe. The only way to reach our destination is to ensure that we have set up mechanisms for, first, periodic, regular, self-critical reflection, self-examination. Does my action reflect my beliefs and my politics? Could I have done it in a better way? Second, we have to create for ourselves mechanisms for honest collective feedback from those we work with, whoever they may be, at whatever level, in any hierarchy. We have to give others permission to do this, to hold a mirror up to us so we can see ourselves and our practice more honestly. And finally, I think we need to locate at least one external ally or guide who is willing to be an honest but critical companion who will walk with us and support us on this challenging journey and pick us up when we stumble and fall. Thank you.